Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. It's time for This Week in Fishing. Um, this week, uh, Monty Smith is going to be joining us of Gold Country Sport Fishing, and he's going to be talking motherlode kokanee and rainbow trout at New Maloney's Reservoir and Don Pedro Reservoir. Monty's been catching some kokanee up to two pounds. Uh, Kevin Brock of fishkevinbrock.com is going to be joining us, telling us about the Valley Striper Bite, some exciting river rainbow action, and the Valley Shad Bite. Um, I'm going to be talking mountain trout. Um, I'm going to be talking about Truckee Area kokanee. Mackinac, Delta Stripers, Sturgeon in Sassoon Bay, and of course I'm going to break down those bites in San Francisco Bay for the halibut, the salmon, the stripers, and all that. Plus we've got a new fishing destination to look at, some tips, and a whole bunch more. So stay tuned. It's time for This Week in Fishing. We're multitasking here today, folks. Uh, Lucy and I are hiking down into the North Fork of the American River Canyon, and it is time for my weekly hot bite report. And uh, there is a lot going on. You know, we're in the middle of this prolonged spring, and fishing is great a lot of different places. We're actually gonna get a little, a little mini snowstorm in this weekend, which is gonna prolong the spring bites even longer. So it's, uh, it's not great news for the short term, but it's great news for the kind of long term outlook. The longer this spring lasts, the longer we're gonna have, uh, have some great fishing to partake in. So let's get started with trout up north, Lake Shasta. Not great, but there's some very large fish up for grabs. Um, big brown trout, um, Gary Co was up there a week or so ago for the uh, Kokanee Power Spring Tournament. And he caught a huge brown and there were, there were several really large browns caught during that derby. But uh, overall, trout fishing at Shasta, probably fair, bass fishing, excellent as always. Um, moving east from there, Elmanor, red hot, rainbows, the occasional king, the occasional brown, rainbows averaging three pounds. They're hitting hardware, they're hitting spoons, troll them fast, move around. It's a haul up there, but uh, well worth the trip. The, the fishing is fantastic and it's gonna continue to improve. So a lot to look forward to at Lake Elmanor. Um, moving down the Sierras, um, we've got a really good kokanee bite that's developed at Stampede Reservoir. Uh, folks are getting limits. They're getting some 12 inch fish, some 13s. Top fish are 14 right now, so that's good. It's fast fishing. Um, anything pink, anything orange, get out there, get after them. You're gonna, you're gonna get some good fish. You're gonna get, get a good salmon dinner out of the deal, if nothing else. Um, Lake Tahoe, right next door. Lake Tahoe is fishing very well for Mackinac. A lot of folks are intimidated to take their own boats up to Tahoe. You shouldn't be. Um, the Mac fishing is pretty simple. You need a sonar unit. Find them, show them some spoons, show them some gulp minnows, rapalas, you know, kind of whatever you got. They'll hit, you gotta work on them a little bit. Use some Procure on your bait, get some scent in the water, and uh, you should have no problem catching a limit. If you don't wanna take your boat up there, folks, Tahoe Sport Fishing offer full day, half day trips, charters, open loads, the whole deal. Those skippers are outstanding. Um, average Mac, three pounds. High-end mac, eight pounds. There's a few uh, few browns in the mix and some larger Mackinac as well. So Tahoe's a great option this time of the year and uh, you can't go to a, a, a prettier destination, that's for sure. Um, little, I guess, northwest of Tahoe is Lake Davis. Davis is now open. Fish Niffer uh, publisher Paul Neeland went up there and caught upwards of 20 fish the other day, trolling spoons, 20 fish. To 23 inches so there are some very nice trout on the bite at Davis um, I can't wait to get up there that's coming soon for me um, so if you like fishing Lake Davis now is the time get up there it's going really well um, let's get off the trout bandwagon here and move on to stripers um, the Delta striper bite just keeps carrying on you can get limits however you want to fish Plug them, spoon them, live bait, cut bait, troll, whatever you want to do. San Joaquin, Sacramento Rivers, the usual spots. Get out there and uh, you should be able to get a limit. Average fish is four pounds. They range up to eight. 
fish well over 30 have been caught this week so you never know what you're going to get during the spring it's really good um a little bit west of that the sturgeon bite is an absolute sleeper guys out there fishing row and eel lights out limit style sturgeon fishing you got to deal with a little bit of wind this time of the year but the fishing fishing doesn't get any better than it is right now it's just amazing shakers keepers oversized they're all on the bite it's hot and heavy sturgeon action um and that brings us to what is what is arguably the hottest most exciting bite in the state right now and that's san francisco bay halibut and striper fishing when the tides are small the live bait halibut bite is is amazing guys are on charter boats they're averaging two per rod a lot of folks are getting limits a lot of fish in that 11 to 20 pound range there's been some 30 pounders reported very good california halibut fishing um, on days when the tides are small, you get mostly halibut and a few stripers. On days when the tides are big, you're going to get limits of stripers and a few halibut. So that's just kind of a cycle. And there have been, whoa, almost, almost ate it right there. There have been some white sea bass mixed in in the bay, which is common in the spring. So you might get a, get a real nice bonus out there drifting live anchovies. Um, ocean, uh, lingcod, rockfish. Bodega, Golden Gate, Half Moon Bay. It's steady, pressure's light. Guys got other things to fish for right now, but the fishing's really good for bottom fish. But we got all summer to fish for bottom fish. So we'll get after those a little bit later. And the uh, King Salmon fishing is getting back on track this week after the, what was it, a two week closure. Fishing was good to very good before the closure. It's gonna take a day or two for the skippers to get back on the fish. Fish are still there, fish are still feeding. So once they find them, we're gonna be back to limits and near limits on the salmon fishing front. So that's it. That's this week in fishing's hot bites from uh, yours truly, Kel Kellogg. There's a lot to choose from. Grab your rod, pick your poison, and you're gonna catch some fish. There's a lot of good stuff going on. I'm going to some, some smaller trout lakes this week. I'm gonna get rained on. Hopefully I'm gonna shoot a bunch of video. We'll see if I can keep my lenses dry and all that. But anyway, until next week, I'm signing off. Get out there and get after them fish. Can't catch them from the couch. Folks, well, there is some really exciting trout and landlocked salmon fishing going on down in the Motherlode region, you know, and there's a bunch of great lakes down there, but the ones that are really going off right now are Don Pedro Reservoir and uh, New Maloney's Reservoir, and I've got one of the best in the business on the phone line when it comes to catching fish down in the Motherlode, and I'm talking about Captain Monty Smith of Gold Country Sport Fishing, and he's going to break it down for us. He's going to tell us about what's going on down there, how we might catch some fish, and how you can get out in the water with him. Good morning, Monty. How are you? Great, Cal. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm sitting here in my uh, my studio and uh, talking fish. And tell us, tell us about Don Pedro. Tell us about New Maloney's. What's going on down there? Uh, Don Pedro, we've been catching kokanee and trout for a good month. Uh, it's been slow, but here in the past, just a couple weeks, it's really taken off, um, and the size of the kokanee cow, we've caught some nearly two pounders this year already. Wow! Um, some of these fish, some of these fish aren't as big as they were last year at the end of the season, and we're already catching these fish. It's gorgeous fish. Just they're clean. They don't have copepods on them or anything like that. They're beautiful fish. Nice. And new Maloney's. Uh, how it's been dead for the past couple of years. It's on fire. Wow. Great fishing over there. You know, there's even some very nice browns coming out of New Maloney's as well. 
Very cool. Those are the biggest kokanee I've heard of in California so far this season. I, I've seen some decent ones out of Stampede, maybe 14 inches, and I've seen some you know big numbers of smaller ones at at uh, at Bullard's. But a two pound that's a that's a real kokanee. That's a hard fighting big fish. That's awesome news, Monty. Um, they're they're incredible. I mean, they're they are toad. They're they're uh, trying to put your hand around it. It just don't work. Nice. Uh, Last Sunday, we, we were going along. It was slow. Then the bike turned on. We found them. We had a triple hookup. We landed them all. All right. It was out there the very next day on Monday. Uh, it started off with a bang, and then we were stuck on five kokanee for a while. And after 45 minutes of nothing, we went across the school of fish, and we had a quadruple hookup, and they were handed them all. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, now, yeah. now you, you and I, we, we've talked. I mean, shoot, we've been fishing together forever. You and I, why well, I know the answer to this question. You and I like Don Pedro better than New Maloney's, but which lake is fishing better right now? Which lake would you go to if you had to choose one or the other? Well, I mean, Don Pedro was an all-time favorite of mine because there's, you know, you can go over there and have a grand slam. You can catch brown, kokanee, rainbow, king salmon. And there's even some rookies in there too, so you can go over there and have a grand slam and more yep. on a day's trip. Uh, New Maloney's was always known for its football-sized rainbows mm -hmm. and the, the gigantic kokanee over there. And that all died here several years ago, just be due to the fact of the drought and the lingering conditions that's after right. effects. But Maloney's is making a comeback as far as kokanee. Well, if you've so never. I mean, we're going to be fishing them both this year. Well, for guys that have never fished Don Pedro, it it is a it's a it has great kokanee fishing and huge kings at times. But the rainbow fishery over there is just robust. I mean, I, I it's very similar to Shasta um, in terms of the rainbows, getting lots of those fourteen to sixteen inch fish, and then you know fish way over twenty inches at times. So it's an awesome lake. So tell us tell us how these folks can. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, how are you catching these fish, Bonnie? How are you catching the kokanee at Don Pedro, and, and how are you catching the trout? You know, Cal, uh, I can target the trout with my spoons, but mm -hmm. when we're targeting trout and kokanee, a lot of times I'll put two rods just for kokanee and two rods for trout. And I'm running, I like to run sling blades because I can run a faster speed. Right. And... The sling blade allows me to run a hoochie faster, and it also I can run a sling blade with a like a number one size needle fish and catch rainbows and kokanee at the same time. Okay. And a lot of the times we're catching kokanee on with needle fish with no corn. A lot of people say, "Well, you've got to have co uh, corn to catch a kokanee." No, you don't. And I've proved it right. time and time again. But the corn does definitely help. Yeah. Uh, here recently, we're running just kokanee gear, and as far as kokanee gear, I'm talking like micro hoochies. Um, you know, you can get it from anybody. I, I get myself from Fisherman's Warehouse, mm -hmm. but you know, if when we're running slow, I like to run Vance's Dodgers. They got a great kick to them. Yeah. The sling blades, like I said, we can actually bend those to get it a very aggressive mm -hmm. uh, flashing action to them. And, you know, Uncle Larry Spinners is a great, great spinner. You know, we're running yep. midday. I like to run purple. Purple is a great color for kokanee. Yeah. Start out in the morning with oranges and pinks. And I run, I got four downriggers on my boat. We're running all different depths. We're catching fish from 25 to 60 feet deep right now. All right. All right. People are hearing you talk, and, and, and I, you know, the people on the channel, obviously, they watch my stuff. Now you know where I learned how to do this stuff, guys. It, this is like uh, Monty's repeating back what I repeat back, what I learned from Monty. Anyhow, if folks want to get out on the water with you, Monty, how do they, how do, they do it? If they want to see this fish in firsthand and they want to learn a lot about, uh, about trolling, how, how can they get out on the water with you? Well, Cal, they can call or text this number I'm going to give you. It's 209-581-4734. And like I said, you can call or text me or go to my website at Gold Country Sport Fishing. You can just Google Gold Country Sport Fishing. It'll take you right to my website. It'll show recent photos. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a beautiful 24-foot Willie boat. 
Yep. Awesome fish. Huge awesome boat. Fish out of it. Got, yeah. I mean, we run the top of the line here. So, um, and I also put a brand new Garmin on my boat this year with incredible, incredible viewing of what's down below it. Very cool. Yep. I was following a lot of that, a lot of that stuff on Facebook. Well, I know you got stuff to do, Monty. I'm going to say goodbye for now, but uh, we'll come back at you next week and we'll talk more about what's going on down in that Motherlode region. All righty, Cal. You have a great day. You too, Thank sir. You. Thank you so much. Well, all right, folks. There you have it. Um, I fished with Monty Smith. I don't know how many times I fished with him. If you want to go out, have a good time, catch some kokanee, catch some rainbows, jump on a trip with Monty Smith. But even if you have a boat, um, I urge you to get out on the water with him. That guy is an encyclopedia of cold water fishing. Um, he's taught me to do a lot of things, how to target kokanee and trout at the same time. He's the guy that taught me how to roll shad originally. When I wanted to learn how to roll shad, I called Monty up. I said, let's go to Don Pedro. Teach me how to roll shad for kings. And he did. He is an encyclopedia of, of trolling. Um, he, he is the guy that turned me on to fast trolling and how to rig up my hybrid lead core rigs. He does it a little bit different than me, but the original idea came from Monty Smith. So anyway, enough said. Um, if you want to learn some stuff, you want to catch some fish, you want to have some laughs, jump on Monty Smith's big giant willy boat and uh, you're going to have a good time. And right after this, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you a couple tips that I learned directly from Monty Smith um, on how to target rainbows, how to target kokanee, and how to catch fish down there in that mother load region. So look forward to that. Anyway, here comes a break and I'll be right back at you. Over the years, I've spent a good deal of time out on the water with Monty Smith and I've learned a ton about trolling for landlocked salmon and trout. Um, whether it was how to speed troll for rainbows and kings in shallow water or how to roll shad for kings in deep water, um, Monty's been quite the encyclopedia of trolling tactics. But one of the things that really impressed me and one of the lessons I've really taken to heart is that Monty targets multiple species of fish at multiple water levels at the same time to maximize your chances of hooking up. He fishes Don Pedro Reservoir a lot. There's browns in Don Pedro, rainbows, kings, and kokanee. And here's how Monty might set up and, and how I would set up now, now that I've, I've fished with him and I've learned these lessons about multiple depth, multiple species fishing. So let's say our target species is going to be kokanee. But uh, we also want to put an offering out for rainbows and we want to put an offering out for kings. Monty would start out with the deep offering first. He'd probably be rolling shad, but I'd run something like this most likely. This is a six inch gold star dodger and it is trailing a shad pattern hoochie. Um, and I'd, I'd probably put some anchovy skin on those hooks and I'd put some scent on it. I'd run this very close to the ball, five or six feet back, okay? Once that was rigged up, you want to drop it down to, uh, to 40 feet. Now the kings are going to be on the bottom of the, of the water column. So initially, drop this down to 40 feet. And then we'd put a stacking clip on the, on the cable. And then we'd put our traditional kokanee offering. In this case, an orange, orange and gold sling blade with a little bend in it. And a wedding ring spinner. Of course, we'd tip that with corn, put some Pro Cure on it. And then we would drop both rigs down some more such that the salmon, the king salmon rig was working at 80 feet and the kokanee rig was working at 40 feet, okay? Now, that covers your kokanee and your king salmon. On the other downrigger, we're gonna run another kokanee bait. We'd put on another sling blade probably or maybe a Vance's dodge. You'd probably put a hoochie on that one. Run that maybe 10 or 15 feet behind the ball. And we would drop that down about 15 to 20 feet. Then we'd put on another stacker clip and we would run our rainbow trout offering. In this case, a Seps Strike Master Dodger trailing a Berkeley Power Grub. OK, 
okay? And we'd go ahead and we'd drop that down rigger all the way down to 40 feet. And what we'd be left with is a kokanee bait at 40 feet and a trout bait working at probably around 25 feet. We troll slow, and in that way, we're working the entire water calm, and we're maximizing our chances of hooking fish. We might end up with a, with a trophy king down there deep, a five or six pound fish. We might end up with some nice rainbows up near the surface, and as likely as not, our dominant catch for the day is going to be kokanee on those mid-level lines. So just remember, this is a tip from Monty Smith, when you're out there on the water, Work the entire water column. If you have multiple species of fish out there, work the depths and maximize your chances of hooking up. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. It's time to talk trout fishing destinations and today I'm gonna to talk about one of my favorites and you've probably never even heard about it. I'm gonna talk about a trophy trout destination. It's not Eagle Lake or Elmanor or Shasta or the Sacramento below Reading, none of those places. I'm gonna talk about the middle fork of the American River right outside of Auburn, California. I've been fishing it for going on 25 years and it is full of huge trout. Um, I've personally caught rainbows there to 27 and a half inches. I know of rainbows that have gone up to eight pounds being caught in the river. A buddy of mine caught a nine pound brown a few years ago and I've heard of browns up to 12 pounds being caught. So there are some monster fish on tap. Now you might be wondering, why have I never heard about this fishery? Well, there's a few reasons for that. One, the river hasn't been planted since the 60s. So all the folks that like to go out and, and there's nothing wrong with it, but all the folks that like to go out and soak, you know, the atomic pink uh, glitter power bait and catch a limit of, of, of planted rainbows, those people aren't there because that stuff doesn't work. These are all wild fish, there's no planters, and they don't really respond to stuff like that. You gotta be on your toes to catch these fish. Second, the fly fishing crowd is pretty much non-existent. Now that seems strange if there's big wild trout on tap, but when you think about it, when you visit the river, the reason's pretty obvious. This river was gold mined extensively from the original strike in 1850 all the way up through the Great Depression. And when the first early miners with their gold pans were gone, then came big commercial dredging operations. And what they did, they cleaned out the channel. It's cleaned out down to bedrock in a lot of places. And there's pools that are 20 and 30 feet deep couple that deep water with the massive flows that go through the canyon a lot of the year and uh, fly guys can't wade. There's a lot of brush. Um, they can't really cast. They can't really get down to where the fish are. So fly fishing opportunities are really limited on the, on the middle American. Particularly in the, the, the stretch I like to fish where the trophy trout are which is from Oxbow Reservoir down past the town of Auburn to the junction with Folsom Lake. That's the stretch where you're gonna find your double digit browns and your, you know, your 25 plus inch rainbows. And that water is just not conducive to the fly fishing crowd. The third factor that keeps people from fishing the river in a serious way is the ruggedness of the canyon. Now road access is great. There's a ton of places to park and jump off into the canyon and there are trails that go down to the river. Easy stuff, it's steep, very doable. Once you get off a trail though and start trying to walk along the river, you're gonna be dealing with berry bushes, huge slabs of rock, poison oak, rattlesnakes, there's mountain lions down there, see tracks all the time, bears, pot grows, all of these, you know, somewhat dangerous things exist in the canyon. It's not an easy place to access if you want to fish it seriously. So fishing pressure is exceedingly light. Now I was down there last week. Um, I hiked the canyon for about four hours and I had a real typical trip. Um, I had a 17 inch brown, I had an 18 inch rainbow, and I had a rainbow about six pounds come up and check out one of my plugs without striking it. And that was just a, just kind of a regular common, nothing special about it trip. Um, there's several ways to fish the river. If, uh, if, if you're committed enough to get down there and actually hike, hike along the stream and work it, there's a few things that'll work. You can catch planted rainbows and some jumbos just drifting worms. Um, if I want some trout for the table and uh, I want to stay close, I'll bounce down into the canyon, 
fish worms and I'll pull out some nice wild pink meated uh, rainbows. If you want to go after the big fish, I primarily fish with two types of lures. One is a dark colored spinner and I use two, two different kinds from two different manufacturers. One is the old school yellow and black Panther Martin in quarter and three eighths ounce sizes and the other is a either a black, all black, Vibric rooster tail, again in quarter or three ounce sizes, or this one right here, and I shouldn't even show you this one. This one is money. It's a black Vibric rooster tail with a copper blade. Copper blade down in the American, and I don't know why, they like it way more than a chrome blade. They like it more than that black blade. I think it gives off just the right amount of flash to catch their eye, but it's not overwhelming. So that is my number one spinner right there. The Vibric uh, rooster tail with the copper blade in the big sizes. So, but overall, if I'm really hunting trophies, minnow plugs, minnow plugs, minnow plugs. The, the spinners, they'll catch small fish and big fish. The minnow plugs, you are hunting the monsters. They eat they eat each other down there, they eat sculpins, they eat uh, small um, pike minnows, stuff like that. That's, that's how they earn their living. So number one lure, the Countdown Yozuri El Minnow in the medium size. That is money. And I fish it in the rainbow pattern almost exclusively. There's a ton of small rainbows in the river and I figure that's what those big predatory trout eat a lot of the time and uh, they are very willing to strike that lure. If I want a smaller profile bait, I go with a pin minnow in the larger sizes, either in a chrome and black like that, or with uh, a rainbow pattern. That's pretty much all I fish. Now, when I'm fishing the minnow baits, I upsize my tackle, I, I fish them on 10 pound fluorocarbon line and a pretty fast action spinning rod. I cast them out and across and I don't just crank them in, you know, nice and slow and steady. I cast them across, I let them sink in the current some, and I rip them and burn them, rip them, burn them, pause, rip it, burn it, pause, very aggressively. And that catches the attention of the big fish. Now, you get a lot more follows than you get strikes, but uh, you go down there and spend three or four hours casting and ripping and hiking, you're gonna get some follows and you're gonna get some strikes, particularly if you make the effort to be there at first and last light, which is kind of a pain. You gotta hike out of the canyon or into the canyon, as the case may be with a headlamp on. But uh, if you're there in that prime hour of just before dark or just after sunrise, that's when those big fish are really turned on. That's when they're feeding and uh, they will jump all over that minnow plug. So you got to be ready. It's, uh, it'll make your heart beat, that's for sure. So if you're looking for a challenge, if you're physically up to it, if you're mentally up to it, if you want to explore some rough, unforgiving country close to Sacramento, right outside Auburn, California, that, that can give up double-digit trout, the Middle American is the place for you. But uh, take my warning, it's not for the faint of heart. But the rewards, the rewards are just off the charts. So anyway, that's our destination for this week, the Middle Fork of the American River, one of the state's premier trophy trout fisheries. I'm Kel Kellogg. Thanks a lot. I've got Kevin Brock of fishkevinbrock.com on the line, and he's going to tell us about some outstanding fishing. He had two lights out trips today. Tell us what you've been up to, Kevin. Hey, Charlie. Thanks for having us on. We you appreciate bet. that. We sure love sharing the, the good news with everybody so they can get out there and get some fish. Hey, let's start out with the stripers. You know, this last month has just been epic for stripers, and you know what? It's just going to keep right on going. We have one boat out of the Sacramento River that came uh, from Calusa down. We had a big tittle, you know, that's worth those tittles right there in Calusa. Yep. They launched at Steelhead, went down river, and just watered them. You know, everyone limited it out. Um, awesome. Lots of shakers, lots of big fish, lots of new fish that haven't spawned yet. Mm -hmm. Some of our other buddies, you know, another guy buddy fishing over on the feather. They're still rocking them over there. 
they were cast to swim bait and use them to and to that 4 inch bike swim bait. And holy cow, they, they were giving these big tying numbers. And wow. some big fish, 10, 12, 14 pounds. Wow. So some good fish that still, some good fish that still haven't spawned yet. So our river fishing is still life out. It's still going good. So, you know, if you're up on the feather side, go boys pump, Shanghai down. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're over on the Sacramento side, you know, Palooza, you know, something like that. Go on, on the, out of the state park, so on the steelhead bar and grill. Uh, Rock goes on the river there. And uh, go down the river, so there are fish from Lubby, you know, all the way down the drive. Right. So the fishing still stays there. But now one exciting thing this time of year is I get some groups that always want to go catch some trout. And this is all catch and release and it's in the ready area. Right. I've right. been up there before. We talk about it every year. I mean, I've been doing it since like 25th year, actually 25th of the trout. For 20 years, full time, doing that trout over there every spring. And I have never once, ever, been stuck over there. Yep. Today was no different. It was epic fishing. We landed over 50 trout. The people laughed. They joked. I had people who had never caught trout before. I taught them how to cast. I taught them how to be patient. They were set the hook, hooking fish. We got fish up to five pounds. Wow. We had doubles. We had some clones. It was incredible fishing. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. So that's always an awesome option. It's a super fun trip. Definitely, you don't keep them, you know, the catch and release thing, take a photo and sit at home, but if you really want to get in some trout, some beautiful red stripes. Oh, yeah. Just gorgeous, spotted looking trout. Yeah. That ready fishing is second to none in this area. I mean, I've been, I travel all over the state to fish. Mm -hmm. That trout fishing area is epic. It is really that good. It, the, the only place it's better is Alaska. It is. It's a. If you've never done it, you need to do it. It's. It's an amazing rainbow fishery. It's just. It's incredible. It's just awesome. Yeah, and I've even been in Alaska and had it where you know uh, we still got the numbers, but in Alaska you got that chance of getting that ten, twelve pounder. You got right. on the stack. The five, six pounders are big, but we're using ultralight gear, fly mm -hmm. gear, or ultralight spinning. Holy cow! You know, little tiny lambda glass rods and the albendo rods and little tiny four carbon lines. Oh, it's a fantastic fish. It really is. Very cool. Well, let's um, let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about shad fishing, and then I'll then I'll let you jump off. I know you're busy, or you're fishing every day. You need to get some rest. Tell us about the shad bite. Oh man, wait. You know, it, it's just one. You know, we're prepping one boat to another, prepping this gear to that gear. But here's the season. And yep. Yeah. Now we got all kinds of shad. Shad rumors of. Uh, uh, been showing up over on the Feather River, mm -hmm. and you know we even saw some a couple of weeks ago. When we were striper fishing together, where they, they just started coming in. Yes, they're starting to slow down in Chico already. Guys around Scotty, that whole area there, or mm -hmm. guys are starting to get shad. They're starting to slow down. So Butte City, you know, down they're starting to show up in some big numbers. They're catching some out of Calusa, and don't cut out Verona. No. At this time of year, from this time, even for stripers too, yeah, can be absolutely lights out as those fish back back down. So the next couple two three weeks, let's check out that Verona area. So that's, that's going to be a hot tip for shad. Verona's going to go off. There's too many fish to catch, Kevin. We're going to go crazy. There is not enough time. <laughs> Springtime is a crazy time for us. Like I said, I'm driving the rain. I'm driving the blue stuff. I'm driving over boys. Oh, I'm going to Yuma City. I'm back and forth every day, but everywhere yep. we go, we're just whacking fish. Yep. So if you guys want to get out, you know, or people just need information, you know, about fishing, we'll tell them where we're at, what we're catching them on. If they want to jump on our boat, we'll take them out and get a quality trip. You know, we, we really cater to families. Mm -hmm. We really cater to a lot of people. You know, we are a fun fishing boat that's going to catch fish. And uh, we'll have we'll take care of them and have a good time. But even if they want information, have them give me a call, shoot me an email, tell me they're listening to us, watch us on Facebook, watch mm -hmm. us on Instagram, listen to your radio show, we'll turn you at all, and uh, we'll give you lots of information. Awesome. Hey, we appreciate it. Give us give us your phone number, Kevin, and then uh, then you're you're a free man. Hey, awesome. Hey, they can reach us anytime at eight hundred nine nine five 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 four three. Awesome, Kevin. Well, thanks for taking the time to call in, and we will be talking to you again next week. All right. Thank you. Check out our reports at fishkevinbrock.com. You hey, bet. Thanks, Cal, so much for everything, as always, and getting everybody informed. And because of people like you, 
so we get to do what we do. So thank you very much. Awesome. You bet, Kevin. I'll catch you next week. You know, I, I fished with Kevin just a number of times, and I've never had a bad trip with him, whether, you know, I'm fishing for salmon, fishing for stripers. I've not fished uh, the Sack River Rainbows with him, but uh, I know people who have. And, uh, again, if you've never fished that river, I send people up there, and uh, and they always get back to me. They've never fished it. I say, you got to go up there. And uh, if you hit it on even a decent day, it's going to blow your mind. And uh, invariably, they call me back and they're like, I had no idea. I knew about the salmon in the river. I knew about the, the shad run in the spring. But I had no idea that, you know, the other times I fished it, I, I'm on a sea of rainbow trout. They jump. They hit. Your average fish up there is probably 14 inches. But uh, 20 plus inches, super, super common. So anyway, if you want to go catch some fish, you want to tap into the spring fishing, give Kevin Brock a call. He will not steer you wrong. He's a true professional. He's been doing it forever. And uh, his trips are just flat out fun. No pressure. It's all about you. All about you catching fish. So it's a good time. So anyway, um, I'm excited. I wish I hadn't spent the whole day, you know, cutting weeds in my backyard. I should be out fishing somewhere. Nice. Ooh. Oh, power dive. <laughs> oh, they are feisty. On behalf of Lucy the Fishing Dog, Wes Ward, and the rest of the team, this is Kel Kellogg signing off. Please join us again next Thursday for another episode of This Week in Fishing.